Have you ever noticed when you're doing a displacement map and you use a subdivided surface like this ranker model that it always seems to work just fine? Doing my render here at 4K. And if we zoom in, we can see that this 3000 polygon model has tons of detail. We can zoom right up onto it and see all of these little details that we're picking up in the displacement map. And it seems to fit perfectly on the subdivided surface. If we look at the car piece here in the back, we're picking up all the little edges and ripples. But what if we want to use a corner edge and a round edge, like in the case of this wall here? And we go through the same method, we're going to assign a new shader, and then we're going to assign a displacement map. We get our displacement file and load it into the vector space. Turn off our filter. Make sure that alpha is luminance is on. And we pick our EXR file with the matched UV surfaces. We want to make sure that our alpha offset is half of our alpha gain. Then we'll go up to Windows, Rendering Editors, Mental Ray Approximation Editor. We want to apply a new displacement map. We'll set it to Spatial, Fine, View Dependent Checked, and our length at a quarter grid square. But when we render it, we find that it does not look correct at all. I'm going to change our settings here to Mental Ray. We'll add some indirect lighting. And we're going to bump up our resolution to HD. And of course, we'll save. That's always good practice. And when we render, we did not get the result that we're looking for. If you're wondering, I'm using eight gigabytes of RAM. And this machine is running on an i7 processor in a laptop. And this is what happens when we try to mix a 90 degree corner with a round edge. We get this weird displacement map. And this does not look like what we're looking for at all. All of the sides are spread out by about a whole unit. And you say, well, maybe, maybe my settings are wrong. And so we go back to the settings for our picture, and we drop it to one tenth of the scale. Maybe our scale is blown out, we say, and then try to render it again, and we get pretty much the exact same result. The edges are split apart. We don't see our rounded corner here at all. Matter of fact, we don't see any deformation of our faces at all. So you just tell yourself, well, what if I subdivide it? Maybe then 
I'll see this deformation that I'm looking for. So you subdivide it and you render it again. And you say, well, I got, I got something. But this does not look like the model that we are after at all. Not even close. So we go back and we change our settings again. We'll change our alpha offset to two times. We're just burning up electricity and time doing all these multiple renders. Still nothing. So I've been working on this particular model for over 12 months. And I contacted the digital tutors and I contacted the experts from Mudbox and they had no answers for me. So over the course of 12 months on and off, I played with this and this is the formula that I came up. Our original model, by the way, has 18 million polygons. And when we render it with just a bump map, it still doesn't quite look right. So what we're going to do is we're going to export it from Mudbox, we're in Mudbox here. We want to select our sculpted model. It's got the paint layers and the sculpt layers and all the different layers on it. And we'll go down to Send to Maya, update the current scene or send as a new scene. We want to send meshes at current level. So we're going to send all 8 million polygons to Maya. Then, once we get to Maya, we want to use our Paint Select tool. We'll open up our tool options, make sure that we are in the Select menu. We can change the radius. Then we want to select our detailed object. And then we're going to right click and select vertex. We're going to select the vertexes with our paint selection tool. So I'm going through and selecting all the vertexes on the flat surface. And I'm not selecting the vertexes on the sculpted surface. It's rather difficult to see with. 8 million faces, but after you play with a model for a year, you get to know it pretty well. I tried tons of different variations, tons of different forms, and this was the way that I got it to finally work using this method. So when you're selecting your vertexes, you want to remember not to get greedy because at 8 million faces, you're going to slow down just about any video card, any processor setup. On this particular computer, I'm using two Opterons and 256 gigabytes of RAM with 12 gigabytes of video power from NVIDIA. Once we have our vertexes selected. We want to go down to the Merge Vertex tool. We're going to select one of the vertexes in our group, and we're going to merge it with a vertex which is not in our group. And this will take a while. If I remember right, just with this small amount of vertexes selected, it took about two minutes for this tool to make up its mind. And then you get this series of edges. You notice there's some lag going on now. We'll move our edges down until they're away from the rest of the geometry. Select our geometry. This is important. We want to go to Edit, Delete History. And then we want to go to our scene. 
and save our scene. Otherwise, if it crashes, we have to go through this whole two minute process all over again. After we're done saving, we want to select edge. We'll select the edges. Then I'm going into wireframe to make sure I didn't select anything on the back behind the edges. And then after we have our edges selected, then we're going to delete. And the delete function will also take about two minutes more or less, depending on how many vertexes or edges you have selected. Given this method takes a really long time, it probably took me three or four days to doctor this model. Also, after you've deleted the edges, you want to delete the history and save the scene a second time. Taking into consideration, I worked on this model for a year, spending a week to use the method is not very much time. So first we want to transfer from Mudbox and we want to paint select our vertexes, use the merge vertex tool, delete history and save, select, delete edges and delete history and save again and repeat, which takes a very long time, but it is the most effective method. Now I'm working down in this bottom corner of the model and we're going to go over a few of the poly reduce tools. So we're going to select just a few faces down here in the corner. Once you get your main geometry cut out, this often helps to get edges which are round but not definitively textured. You can reduce these remaining polygons to shorten the overall size of your scene. Using this method would probably not work with a video game. So we're going to reset the settings on our poly reduce tool and we'll move it up to 100%. Then click apply. This also takes a long time. Probably about two minutes for the poly reduce tool to work on this very small amount of polygons. And reducing it 100% gives us the same effect that we were using with our merge vertex tool. So if we move our percentage down, first we're going to control Z to go back. Then we'll reduce our percentage to 75% and apply, waiting another two to three minutes for the poly reduce tool to work. And it reduces the polys by 75%, which are still fairly dense. Then we'll go back and reduce to 50% to give you an idea of how the percentages work on the poly reduce tool, and the amount of time versus processor that it takes as compared to using the other method. And at 50%, it works a little bit faster, but our polys are still fairly dense. Next, we're going to talk about the crease edges tool. So here we have the finished model and we're going to select our faces first on different sections of our wall. I'm going to select all the faces that do not have the organic geometry on them. And then once we have all the faces we want selected, we're going to go down to select, convert selection, convert to edges. 
once that has completed, Then we'll go up to Edit Mesh. We want to go down to the Crease Options. We can either create a crease set, or we can go to Edit Mesh and we'll go down to the Crease Set Editor and we will create a new crease set with all of our edges selected. Then we will select our crease value to 8, which is around the highest you can get. Looks like I'm using 6 here, which is still fairly hard. Then we'll select our entire object and we'll go to subdivisions 3. Yes, we want to subdivide our 1 million polygon mesh. And as soon as it finishes, we can tell that this is not the result we're looking for. The faces are all crinkled. And if you look here in the back, the face is stretched over where we want our corrosion here. So this crease set is not going to work at all for this organic modeling. Here I'm using my camera view. It's pretty self-explanatory. Now with our method mesh, we have a render time of about 1 minute and 30 seconds, which is significantly less than trying to render a mesh with 8 million polygons or 18 million polygons. We go to our poly count. We can see that we are just under a million. It looks like about 820,000 on our method mesh. And if we go back to our original that we imported from Mudbox, If you remember, we started out with 18 million, then we reduced a few subdivision levels, and the one that we imported was actually about 4.6 million polygons. So 4,640,000 polygons was the mesh we started with. So we reduced it by a little bit more than one quarter. By the way, this 4 million polygon mesh took more like 10 or 15 minutes to render all by itself. That's where we started out. This is where we ended up. While not perfect, is a viable solution for what we want to do. Here's our finished product. See, we have the organic set. We have the square edges. For our full scene, it took about 22 minutes 